Podcast and Deborah Kovat Live. Gosh, I am so honored to welcome to our show Gino Gaudio, president of the Tony Gaudio Foundation, and also brothers Fabrizio Nucci and Alessandro Nucci, um, who just flew in recently from Cosenza, uh, Italy, joining us um, because they are working on the beautiful film about the life of Tony Gaudio, the first Italian to receive an Oscar. It is a brilliant story. I'm honored to be just a small part in telling this story. All of you, welcome to our show. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. It's a real pleasure to be here. Thanks for doing this. Thank oh, you, absolutely. Deborah, for having us. Oh, Thank absolutely. You. Of course. Now, who wants to go first? Who would like to tell me about Tony Gaudio? Perhaps you, Gino, you share, yeah. share the same last name, would you please? Yes, I will. There were two brothers that came from Cosenza, Italy in 1906, roughly. They came to New York. There's Tony and Eugene Gaudio. My grandfather, Tony Gaudio, was my great uncle. They started working out in the labs. And then when, trans when uh, production transferred to the West Coast, they came West. And so mm. they, in the early days, they began in the silent era with their filming. Yeah and made the transition, Tony made the transition. Um, they started, the Gaudio family had a tradition dating back to 1857 in Cosenza, Italy, where they had portrait studios. And so they learned their craft back in Cosenza. Uh, right. My grandfather died in 1920. Tony Gaudio lived on to become just a giant in the motion picture industry, primarily with Warner Brothers. He created a lot of effects. Uh, and he was nominated six times for the Academy Award and won once for Anthony mm -hmm. Adverse in 1937. Yeah, that is a brilliant film. I looked it up and um, what an incredible film. Now, let me talk to you, both of you, um, uh, Fabrizio and Alessandro. You're from the town where Tony uh, is from. And I know that there's a plaque that now um, memorializes him there. We'll get into that a little later. But talk to me about his journey um, way back in the day, in the early part of the 1900s, working in Cosenza, because I know that people are still talking about his legacy there. Talk to me, please. Yeah, it's a very interesting story because uh, Gaetano Tony Gaudio was born in Cosenza, at the same town we were born, and uh, he traveled away from Cosenza, Calabria, from the south of Italy. He's supposed to, uh, to work in uh, Piemonte too, for one of the, the major and the first production company of Italy, Ambrosio Film in Turin. And then he moved to USA in 1906, uh, starting his American dream with, uh, with this journey, first in New York, then in Los Angeles. And then he started his uh, brilliant career in cinema um, uh, with all his uh, uh, innovations in cinema uh, about techniques of how to, uh, to light the scene, how to, to light the movies. And uh, so it's a pleasure and an honor for us uh, telling this story, uh, not just because of uh, this important uh, figure, but also because uh, Tony uh, was uh, from the same city of us. So it's a real pleasure and an honor to tell this story that uh, um, someone knows, especially here in America, but in Italy is uh, not uh, so uh, a new person. Uh, because uh, uh, his story uh, may be missing during the time, uh, as is a statuette, because, you know, his statuette, uh, his uh, 1937 statuette uh, has been lost. And so now we are here for shooting, but also for trying to, to find this statuette uh, somewhere. Right. Who are you working in conjunction with where you're going to be shooting? Because I know you have various locations throughout Los Angeles. You're also going to be in New York. Talk to us about that. Anybody can jump in at this point. Yes, yes, we are shooting here in LA and we have already done some beautiful interviews. For example, we have been to the clubhouse of the American Society of Cinematographers and we have um, interviewed uh, great cinematographers. For example, we have had the pleasure and the honor to have uh, Richard Edlund with us. Uh, maybe oh. it, it's, a, it's a name that no, not everybody knows, but I can just name a few title, title of uh, his career, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Riders of the Lost Ark. Wow. B very un unknown small movies. <laughs> so Absolutely. it was a, 
a giant a giant honor for us to interview uh, Richard Edlund, uh, one of the biggest uh, special effects experts. And actually, you, you know, Deborah, uh, it's uh, it's a nice coincidence because the very first short movie that uh, um, Tony he, he filmed when he arrived in New York in 1906. Actually, the, the first short is from 1909. It's a beautiful oh. short movie, an animated short movie full of effects, for example, stop motion. Uh, it's a story of a, a little uh, fairy uh, containing a bottle, uh, and then a, a big guy breaks the bottle, and you see this little fairy coming out of the bottle. So full of special effects, and we show this uh, this clip to Richard Edlund to check his reaction. It was very nice and very funny. Uh, and so, you know, it's a, it's a brilliant career. Uh, Tony Gaudio shot so many movies. Uh, someone says 1,000, maybe exaggerating, but Ooh. at least at least 100 movies. And in yes. a career, it's a, it's a lot. Because, you know, today it's impossible for a cinematographer to shoot 100 movies in his career. But at the time, with the studio system, you know, it was more kind of a... a you know, like the like the car industry, they shoot they shot one film after the other very fast, and so a right. cinematographer could experience uh, uh, so many different movies in his career. Maybe he could shoot like five, four, six uh, movies in just one year, working with yeah. many stars and especially with Betty Davis. Yeah, and I know he was also very well known to also the way he lit the films, right? Because back then, I remember once going to the um, New Jersey home of, um, uh, oh gosh, who was it? Was it Thomas Edison? I don't recall. Where they were showing how, you know, they would move the sets to capture the lighting above, right? So he had to work with all that way back in the day, right? So he was really so ahead of himself. Again, anybody jump in about his craft, about how ahead of himself he was and how he very quickly got notice here by the American film societies, right? Yeah, yeah. For example, uh, you know, um, Tony Gaudio started to work in a period, uh, he was a pioneer somehow, because he started, uh, as I told you, in 1909. So uh, cinema was uh, at its beginning, we can say, the first uh, couple of decades of the of cinema history. And uh, actually, a year in the United States, the cinema, the, the cinema industry didn't start in Los Angeles, Angeles, but in New York, that's and, right. Uh, and he started to work there, and then he moved to LA uh, in uh, maybe 1915, more or less. And uh, at the time, uh, the the lighting techniques were very basic, and uh, right. uh, the most important thing in, in movies was to have uh, you know an exposure, so everything has to be lit properly. Everything was to be to be very bright, and especially the actors, uh, the actors. Uh, especially the actresses, uh, has to be very well lit, and everything was a little bit flat, you know. Um, uh, at the same time, in mm. Europe, there was the German espresso expressionism, and they were already experimenting a lot in light with lights. But here in Hollywood, in uh, New York, and then in Hollywood, light the lighting was a, a little bit flat and not very interesting. And people like Tony Gaudio started to experiment with lighting, and they started to to play with the uh, uh, dark, with the light, with the shadows. Uh, it was very well ahead of time. For example, in his movies, you could see uh, the the faces of the actresses. Sometimes uh, they were coming from the darkness, and then they moved to light. You could see, for example, half of the faces in darkness and the half of the face in light. It was so ahead of time at the time, especially because yeah. studio system had a big control over movies. So it was uh, you had to be a little bit of an outsider to experiment with the light that way. And uh, and at the same time, it could also give a great value to to the faces of the actresses. For example, Betty Davis at, at some point she said that. Uh, he just wanted Tony Gaudio for for her movies. Uh, she didn't want any other cinematographers because you know Betty Davis uh, was a, a very a diva. A diva was a diva, but she had a particular face, so she really cared a lot about the way she looked. And Tony Gaudio uh, was great with her, and after many years, she still remembered the the way she looked in those movies. No, well, lighting really is sort of 
everything, right? I mean, without this lighting, um, you know, let's just say the right lighting just makes you look a whole lot better, right? I mean, <laughs> um, uh, Gino, let's talk yeah. a little bit about some of the very well-known people that now we just uh, heard about Bette Davis, but also didn't he work with Greta Garbo? Because I do know that people asked for him. They said, look, I'll do this yeah. film, but you've got to get yeah. Tony Gaudio on board. I know that he worked with, I believe, uh, Howard Hughes. I mean, so many um, infamous figures in early film. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I know that he worked, like you say, I know that uh, um, he worked with Betty Davis. Primarily, that's the biggest star that I know of that he worked with. He, yeah. did, uh, he worked with Errol Flynn. Yeah. He worked with all of the major stars, but he was very well, um, he was very well known and asked for. I, as far as the, the actual people, maybe Alessandro or Fabrizio have a better handle on exactly which stars, but, um, you know, he... Uh, as far as one of the things I wanted to mention to you is that he did develop a lighting technique where he was able to light from the inside out rather right. than from the outside in. So he, he was, he was very, very innovative in, in what he was doing. Right. And from what I understand, I mean, that did start at such a young age. I mean, creativity yeah. like that develops, but you're also born with it too. And, and clearly he even experimented a little just when he was young and working in Cosenza. Right. You know, and, so you could go ahead. Well, I was going to say, you know, when I went back in September, when uh, the, the plaque yeah. that you were talking about, uh, uh, Alessandro and Fabrizio set up a, a, a red carpet event that involved local government, involved a lot of people, jour journalists, wow. um, people that wrote about it, the film commissions and so forth. And so there are a lot of people that all of a sudden now have they've had this ongoing interest and now they have a focal point where they can, they can focus this interest. And so when we were there, you're talking about the history and how they learned their craft. Well, mm -hmm. their older brother, Raffaele, ran the photo studio. And when we were back there in Cosenza, we went to a museum that had pictures. Oh. There were panoramic pictures that Raffaele had done of a construction oh, wow. of a bridge back in the early 1900s. So he had, you can imagine the process that he went through with the ambient lighting and setting up for a panoramic shot of this bridge construction. So I think even back in the day, I think the family, they had a family history of innovation. Yeah. And then they brought that, uh, they brought that to this country. And yeah. I know I, just, from a, just from a family standpoint, I know we've heard, We've heard all of the stories about Tony Gaudio and the lost Oscar, you know, just in terms of sitting around the, the table at, at parties and so forth. And, but it's all been, I'm learning so much from Fabrizio and from Alessandro, yeah. all the detail about his life from, from people who actually understand the significance of what he contributed in the early days and, and bringing forward the, you know, the, the artistry, from the Italian community within which they grew up. You know, it was important to be an artist. It was important to have uh, a refined sense of technique. And they brought that all to the United States and then to the West Coast. Mm. I, I'd like to say the apple doesn't fall far from the family tree because you're quite a performer, Gino, a beautiful singer. I mean, the first time I heard you open your mouth, I thought, oh, Oh my goodness, you perform throughout Los Angeles, festivals, et cetera. But um, I would just like to point that out to our audience that you're Thank pretty you. darn talented yourself. But uh, let's get back to Tony, uh, Tony for um, a moment. What's also very important about this story and about his work is how well received he was as an Italian at a time in our nation's history that that often wasn't the case, right? I mean, they were lucky to yeah. find work um, you know, very often, like my family, they were gardeners, which is fine. They started a business, et cetera. But, but he came in and he was well-received among the elite, yeah. let's say, yeah. right? So let's talk about what he did for Italians in this country. Anybody? Okay. Uh, well, you should, of course, yeah. Yeah. Of, co of course uh, uh, Tony and Eugene were important, not just for what they did in the uh, cinema industry, industry uh, for the movies they shot, but also for the institution they contributed to, to build here. For example, right. Eugene was one of the founders of American Society of Cinematographer, and uh, uh, Tony was one of the, the first presidents in the early days. So uh, uh, they contributed uh, uh, for about the Italian-American uh, community 
also uh, with uh, other kind of uh, um, of work. So uh, not just uh, on the set, but also behind the set uh, for uh, building what we uh, know uh, nowadays is the cinema industry here in Los Angeles. So maybe right. the contribution was uh, also for uh, making uh, Italians, immigrants uh, important here because they were they were not just workers, but they also contributed to build American society and on not only uh, cinema industry, but also uh, um, what we know uh, Los Angeles is, is uh, nowadays. And in fact, we were also collaborating with the Italian American Museum of Los Angeles because uh, telling about the Italian migration of those years is, is another important aspect of our uh, documentary. So it's not only about uh, cinema and the film industry and the cinematography techniques, but also a story of uh, migration. And we would like to understand more about how Italians got the, to the United States, but especially why many of them migrated then from the East Coast to the West Coast. And there are many reasons. For example, uh, uh, here it's not so different from uh, our hometown Cosenza because we have the sea and not far from the sea, we have the mountains and the That's weather right. uh, uh, is not so extreme. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, there uh, already at the beginning of last century, there was a, a nice, a great wine industry. So many Italians mm. uh, who already had uh, some uh, expertise in that field uh, in their um, homeland, when they came here, they could continue to work here, and maybe they could be also uh, they could be accept accepted a little bit better here than on the east coast because you know when they got to New York, many of them ended doing uh, very you know um, easy works. Yeah, easy, easy work. They were somehow also a little bit poor, but when they came here, maybe their abilities, their skills could be much more useful. Uh, and so they had a great success on uh, on this side of the country. <laughs> I would say that he opened quite a few doors, right, for Italians to be working in this creative field. Would you say that? Yes, and also, of course, uh, since here, there were already many people, for example, from Mexico, many Spanish, and they right, have right. much in common. Uh, the language is not very different. Of course, the religion, because uh, both Spanish and Italians are Catholics. And so when mm. they came to California, maybe it was easier for them. They find like a second home that was not much different from Calabria. Mm -hmm. So this this is an interesting story because we start right about his early life in Cosenza and then we journey to New York where he started uh, working in the States. Then we come here and he wins the Oscar. And when did he die? When did Tony pass away? 1951. 1951, right. yeah. Right. And again, the first Italian, not Italian-American, but the first Italian to win an Oscar, which I think is extraordinary. And now it's gone. Right? It's gone. <laughs> hence, yeah. hence the name, The Lost Oscar. I think it's just a fabulous and fascinating story about immigration, about the cinema industry, and, and showing... Uh, our beautiful home country in Italy. But what are we doing to find this Oscar? How can we find it? Have you spoken to, let's say, the folks at the Academy um, to say, gosh, he won an Oscar, we're looking for it. Like, what are you doing to, to fill in that gap, if you will? We are uh, looking everywhere. <laughs> because <laughs> we we asked it to, to the Academy, of course, too, but uh, maybe they don't have and so also through Gino, we are trying to, to go, go back uh, to the family. family. Yeah, to the family and uh, to try to understand who can have this, uh, this statuette. But maybe no one has. So we are asking ourselves, uh, maybe uh, where can Tony uh, have uh, put this Oscar in the, in the last uh, years of his life? Because when he retired, he moved from Los Angeles to San Francisco, and then he went back to his early years because he opened a, a photographic store in San Francisco as a, the uh -huh. family photographic store they had in Cosenza. So we are trying to, to think as a, a Tony maybe a, a thought in that years. And so we, we are looking around. Maybe we will find, but you have to watch our documentary. We don't want to spoil any. Yeah. No spoilers. 
Deborah. No. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, I can tell you that uh, as far as the family is concerned, I know the you know, there's about 14 or 15 of us cousins that are getting together on Saturday. Ooh. All of our lives growing up, all of our lives, we've heard this story about Tony Gaudio, first Italian, win the Oscar, where's the Oscar? It's been the family story history, the outstanding question of our family for 60 years, where is the Oscar? And nobody knows where it is. You know, we have our theories. It might be in Texas with his second wife's family. But other than, we really have absolutely no idea. We have some, some, some threads of contacts that we're going to follow up on. But uh, it's really kind of an extraordinary story. Oh, absolutely. You've got me curious. I want to go on a hunt. Really, like each one of us, we take a little section and see if we could find out where is, where's the Oscar, the lost Oscar, fabulous title of the documentary, by the way. But where was it last seen? Like, was there a picture of him and it was in the living room or something like that? Like somebody must have seen it like, oh, I remember he had it in the kitchen. I don't know, wherever well, you put an Oscar. I, Nothing. I, actually, I, go ahead, Fabrice. Uh, go ahead, uh, Alessandro. Uh, no, I just wanted to say that uh, Tony's uh, uh, um, career, of course, is made of more than 100 movies. But the, right. the particular the particular thing is that uh, about his private life, we don't have many documents because even if he was a, a photographer and a cinematographer, for example, we didn't used to take many pictures of right. his family, of, of, of himself at home. Uh, so actually, I think that the only picture of Tony with his Oscar is during the ceremony. Ah, <laughs> That's wow, the only I one I've ever seen. I hope we didn't leave it at the restaurant. I mean, you know, maybe got, forgot got there. <laughs> yeah, in the toilet, maybe somewhere. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You, you guys a are taxi, great. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Tony is buried with some very notable people in Hollywood, right? At the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, Rudolph Valentino, to name a few, are there. I love that place, actually. You know, when I have friends come into town, I often take them there. And the cemetery where Marilyn Monroe was buried, it's like, oh, come on. We're going, we're getting from the airport. We're going to take you to the cemetery. They're like, what? But there's so much history right in these cemeteries. Yeah. I just think that's beautiful. So that's one of the locations where you're also going, right? Yeah, but for, yes. for example, some some days ago, we interviewed Marianna Gatto, the president yeah. of the Italian American Museum of Los Angeles. Yeah. And she told us that she used to do yoga session in the in that cemetery because it's a so great location. And so we are excited to shoot there in a couple of days, too. Oh, that's exciting. That's absolutely you know that, wonderful. That cemetery, back it backs up to Paramount Studios. Yes. So it's uh, in terms of location, and you can also see the Hollywood sign from there. And uh, Tony Gaudio is buried there. Eugene Gaudio is buried there. And their mother is also buried there. And uh, I have to say with some pride that uh, my wife and I have a plot there. Oh. Next to well, Tony, near Tony Gaudio. <laughs> wow, Gino that's ready. beautiful. <laughs> G not yet, Gino. You got <laughs> not, yet. Not, yet. No. not yet. Not yet. Later. Many, much, many, much later. Yeah. Many decades to come, please, Gino. Many decades but to come. Yeah. Many, many decades to come. Uh, let me before I let you all go. Um, I'd like to also mention that uh, Mary Reed is also producer on this film mm -hmm. because once the film is made and put together, I want to have you all back and talk to Mary as well because I know she's been doing an extraordinary, extraordinary job on this. I mean, but again. This is a story of immigration. This is a story yeah. of a successful Italian. Um, it's an important story. And I really could see Hollywood getting behind this. You know, the more you've got out there shooting this, this is really an exciting documentary. I'm just thrilled to be even a small part to be able to tell the story. I really am. Yeah, but, Anything else, you, yeah, please. Well, yeah, I wanted to say that, from, you know, from, a, from the family standpoint, you know, our, Obviously, when you have a family member like this, you know, you just focus on, yes, he won the Oscar and so forth. But in this process, right. you know, having worked Please. for like two or three years with uh, Alessandro Fabrizio and going through this process, you realize that, you know, this this subject, it, it's it's important for the industry, as you're saying. In other words, the lost Oscar is kind of, an, uh, of a, uh, a metaphor, if you will, metaphor. for the lost you know, possibly the lost art or the lost recognition for the Italian contribution in the film industry. That's and it's right. also it's also been and is a wonderful focal point for my family. 
I mean, this That's is right. uniting all of us cousins, you know, around this idea that we've had forever and ever. Uh, it, this, I, I, what I'm trying to say, I think, is that this, this project will, I believe, unify both on a familial level and also in the industry in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. It's a focal point that we've, as Italians and Italians American, Americans, have been looking for. And I believe mm. that it will be that for, for yeah. our community. Well, isn't that what it's all about in our culture? Yeah. It's about the family, the good yeah. and the bad, right? The beautiful yeah. and the ugly. It's just sort of what we're all about as, yeah. as Italians. Uh, we're complicated people, right? And the <laughs> fact that, that this man traveled so far and yeah. did so much in his life and career and now is bringing together people so many years later in the year 2023 yeah. to talk about his story. Yes. Um, you're right. This is a family story, and it's a beautiful one, too. I want to also end by um, talking about the plaque that is dedicated in Cosenza and that you were there for personally, that you, too, were responsible for also getting off the ground. That is on what particular building? Would you tell us? Yeah. Fabrizio, why don't you, uh, Lysandra, okay. why don't you guys tell that story? Because the, this building is uh, in the whole uh, part of our town of Cosenza that now is a, 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 an abandoned part of the city, un unlucky. Ah. Um, and so uh, it was uh, important for us to, uh, to put this plaque on this building where uh, the Gaudios brothers, Raffaele, Eugene, and Tony, uh, start their uh, careers. Then Eugene and Tony moved to USA, uh, Raffaele moved to Rome uh, from Cosenza, and, uh, and there started everything. And so uh, this plaque it was uh, important for uh, uh, the memory of these uh, three brothers, but also for our city, because that part of the city uh, uh, is full of story and, uh, mm -hmm. and of stories and full of history. And so uh, 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 for us, it was important to, uh, to give back the memory of uh, these three brothers uh, uh, to the city and to, uh, and to make everyone a new this story. And mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, Deborah. Uh, everybody in Cosenza has seen that photo Gaudio sign on the top of that building a uh, hundred times in his life, but nobody Not knew. Uh, maybe uh, everybody knew. Maybe thought that it was just a old uh, photo lab, but nobody uh, could, could know that uh, those Gaudios then became famous cinematographers, Academy Award winners. So it's very important also to to give a new a new meaning, a new value. To that, uh, yeah. to that sign, to, to that, uh, you know, um, important place of the city, but that nobody really cared a lot because you just walk or drive close to that building without noticing too yeah, much. Be because, you know, no, the, we know uh, now. Our, the title of our documentary is The Lost Oscar, but not just for the statuette, because it's yeah. a lost story, the one of the Gaudius. And so uh, we don't know if we will uh, find the, the statuette but we hope we will uh, uh, do uh, the recovery of this memory. So right. it will be maybe a, a lost statuette, but not a lost story. We hope. Yes, no. beautiful. As Gino, was, as Gino was saying, it's a story about family. Um, and, and the Oscar is the metaphor where it's built around. So beautiful. Um, I don't know who's scoring uh, this documentary, but gosh, Gino, I sure hope you, you do a little singing on it because I think your voice <laughs> is... Is so you. extraordinary. I think it would be incredibly appropriate, but you actually, know, he's I'm... already done it. For, yeah. in, a, in a scene, we have shot a beautiful scene in Rome where Gino uh, met one oh. of, uh, of his uh, oldest relative, actually. And yeah. uh, at, at some point, he suddenly started to sing, uh, yeah. <laughs> surprising yeah. everybody. And it was a beautiful, beautiful yeah. moment. Of the it's extraordinary. No, I agree. The first time I heard him, I thought, oh, wow. So anyway, um, anything you'd all love to add, because we'll be talking to you as the project continues, mm -hmm. because I'm sure lots will be unfolding about his life. I'm personally very interested. Anything you'd like to end well, with before we let you I just go, wanted please. to add, I just wanted to add my great thanks to Fabrizio and to Alessandro, because it was, it's one of those things where they, they made a, a cold call to me. Yeah. They reached out just because my last name is Gaudio, wondering if I might know something about Tony Gaudio. And that was wow. three years ago. And it has, it has blossomed into this wonderful friendship and relationship and uh, bridge between California and Cosenza. And it's just, it's been, 
just such a wonderful experience. And so just for everyone, I wanted to, I wanted to thank both of them for, for everything that they're thank doing. Thank you, Gino. Thank you, Gino. Beautiful. And, and also it is a project about resilience because we started to work on this project <laughs> after the first lockdown in 2020. And, and we had to postpone multiple times uh, this trip to the United States because as you know, the flights were completely uh, halted multiple times. Uh, the tr uh, where there were travel restrictions during 2020, 2021. And so we are finally here and it, it is like a dream because- uh, And we don't want to leave. At some point <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's impossible. <laughs> Well, I look forward to meeting you both next week. I believe we're getting yep. together, right, uh, for a uh -huh. luncheon. And Gino and uh, Mary, who's producing the film, I look forward to it. I look forward to, you know, continuing with this story as you're, as you're filming it. I think it's, who knows what kind of surprises we're going to uncover. So all of you, thank you for joining us. Thank Gino you, Gaudio, thank you, thank, uh, thank you, Fabrizio, of course, Fabrizio and um, uh, the two of you, uh, Alessandro, sorry. Alessandro, thank you so, so much for joining our shows. Um, just so anyone knows out there, our shows are live. They go out on Facebook and on YouTube. We will be posting promos on Instagram. And then as an audio podcast, you can listen to the podcast. Just look up our names, The Little Italy Podcast and Deborah Cobelt Live. And you'll find it wherever you get your audio and video podcasts. You'll be showing up. So thanks so much. Tell your friends. Tell everybody. And uh, we really appreciate all of you joining us. Um, it's really been a pleasure. I'm your host, Deborah Zara Cobelt. So uh, thanks for joining us. And please get in touch with us. Happy New Year, everybody. Bye-bye.